What is up, my new Vim friends? Today, I'm going to show you a little bit about how I migrated the rest of my configuration from Packer and, and actually eliminated the after directory that I had. I saw this comment on a post whenever I was doing for the Obsidian and InVim integration, which if you haven't checked that out, click that on the top right. It's a really great video. And also, I've been having a lot of fun with it. So check that out if you're interested in note taking in NeoVim and Obsidian. But I saw this comment and I wanted to address it because lo and behold, like I wasn't getting some of the benefits of the lazy loading that LazyVim offers because I was still using the after directory. Now, what I wanted to do is go over how I migrated that today and show you some of the tips and tricks so that you can completely migrate over and get all the nice goodies from lazy loading in lazy.invim. Let's jump into that. All right, so several months ago, like I mentioned, I migrated from Packer, which is not maintained anymore. So if you are still using Packer, definitely migrate over. And I have a video of that in the top right hand corner, if you're interested. After migrating, I still was using the after plugins directory, which gets loaded at the very end of the life cycle. I have a video here that is really good and talks about all the different runtime directories. And essentially the after plugin runs after everything gets loaded. And so you can override any configurations and make sure that your configuration is the one that's loaded at the very end. That way you don't have any conflicts. You can just override anything that you need to. What I found with lazy.invim is you don't get the lazy loading aspect because it goes into a different loading life cycle. I found that you can structure your plugins using this thing from the GitHub page where you can structure your plugins into a file called plugins.lua and then all your individual plugin files can be in your Lua plugins folder and then it all gets merged together into one mega config or single config and you get all the nice things that your lazy loading happens and all your configurations just work. So I wanted to migrate all that after directory and what I had originally, which was a very large Lua table inside of lazy.lua. And from there, I'll show you how to do that mechanically and to do that really quickly so that you don't have anything break on you. We're here in my configuration and I rolled back the work that I had already done. And now we are gonna start from scratch and I'll show you how to implement this and migrate everything. Basically, if we, do this exit tree. You can see that I have multiple plugins here in the after plugin directory. And then most of my my configuration otherwise is in this lazy.lua file, which is under Lua Exosiphon. We're gonna move all of these files into that Lua plugins directory. And then I'm gonna move this information here, lazy.lua into the plugins.lua, which is gonna live underneath the Lua directory here. And so we're gonna move a couple things around. And so you could have them break if you don't do it in the right order. So I'm gonna show you how to do this in the right order. All right, we're here in my new Vim config. And first off, we need to go down into Lua and we're gonna create a new file, plugins.lua. And the directory structure is important here. You have to be under Lua in order for this to work. So we'll hit enter and we'll save. And I'm using oil.invim. I'll make a video about this eventually but this is a really awesome plugin. I switched from NetRW to this one and it's been great. So I'll make a video on this. We hit okay. And in here we wanna do return and some curlies. From there, we can go back and we're gonna go into where I have my Lua table, which is in this lazy.lua file. In here, there's this plugins variable. And at the very bottom, you probably recognize this where you require lazy. And then this is where that variable gets used. Now I want to jump up here and I want to grab this entire variable. Actually, I want to grab all the information out of it. So if I grab this, delete it, and then come back over here, then I will paste this and we'll format it. And so we have a return that is our giant table in here. And if we go back to where we used our plugins, we're gonna delete that local thing and we're gonna go over here and surround and we're gonna use a string of plugins instead of that local variable. And how this works is it just grabs that plugins Lua file and sources it and it's gonna merge all of our files that are under that plugins directory with that original table. So we'll have to move a few things around, but this is gonna make our configuration much more extensible and easier to 
drop files in or remove them very quickly. Now we can double check that this actually works and we can write this file and quit. We'll write this file and quit. And if we clear this and we open back up our NeoVim, then we should see that we get things like telescope working and some of our other config. Like if I do this, we should see NeoClip load up. And so that all works. So we have our config working and we're in a good spot. Now we can go one by one and migrate each of these files. So let's take this one for example. Let's start with Harpoon. The configuration in here is just setting some key maps. And so I wanna take this file and move it up into this directory where we have, actually let's paste this so it's here. And then we'll do plugins and we'll write this and then we'll move Harpoon into here. And so Harpoon is up here, but what we need is we need this to return a Lua table. And so we need this to look kind of like this and this config needs to live inside of a config function. So if we paste this into here and we do config equals function, Then if we format this, we should get it nice. We need to go into our plugins Lua. We move that and we go into a harpoon and I just have this as one single thing. So this is just the line that installs that plugin. So we're going to delete this out of the plugins Lua, save this, go back over into plugins here and paste it here. And there's different sections and I'm going to also go over this in a dedicated video but you want this line to install the plugin and know which one it is. And then you have other functions and other options. So you can do opt and pass in a Lua table or override the entire config function. Basically this opt gets passed into this config function and you can do some other stuff. I, I like using the config function for right now just for this migration, but I'm gonna dig further into this and see what makes sense. All right, from this point, we'll back that out and we'll save this if we quit and we come back over here, we should see no errors. And if we do control E, which is my harpoon thing, then we should see this working. And if we open up a file, then we can do leader A, which is adding a file and we see that show up. So harpoon is still working. We've successfully migrated it I haven't outlined exactly the lazy option, but we can add that into the config by saying like lazy true or using an event to actually load harpoon. So we have it set up and everything is within the lazy.invim load lifecycle. I'm gonna go through each one of these one by one, not on this video, but you have a template now for how to migrate all your plugins into this different lifecycle. The final step I took is actually to go back in and move this lazy.lua file. This is all just lazy config. And so I ended up grabbing all of this and moving it up into, oops, not that, into my init Lua file at the very top level. See where I'm requiring this exosyphon.lazy? Well, this can go away and we're just gonna copy all of this into here. And I'm gonna paste this right over where that require was. And we don't need to use that load mechanism anymore. We can now just load it into this very root directory and have everything loaded. That was the final step after moving all the files. I hope this video helps you in understanding how to get everything, if you have been using Packer in the past, into the lazy.invim lifecycle. If you have suggestions on videos that you wanna see or other topics you want me to cover, definitely leave a comment below. And I appreciate you watching. Always love everybody who posts on the videos and sharing their thoughts and ideas and asking for help. So keep that up and I will see you in the next one. Thanks everybody.